Ryan Sport Bible. Um, you recently had um, a few, well, a match with uh, Michael Satsumura on OTT, and the whole build to that was about you being becoming more serious in the ring. And again, today we saw you carry the beer down to the ring, and there was dancing, as there always is, but it was quite serious. Is that something that you've been trying to kind of get more towards? Yeah, I think over the last little while, I have been, I've been wrestling as Martina for about four years now. And depending on where I am, I kind of feel that I went to, I wrestled in America recently and because they don't know who I am, I could go back and just do jokes and it lived through the moment, like do no wrestling whatsoever because that's not what they want to see when they hear of Session Moth, they hear of the jokes, they hear the laughs, they hear of just the funny, different, the completely different female wrestler. That's what I aspire, that's what I try to be when I first get out there and that's how I got noticed. And so I did that in America and it worked wonders. So like, oh, this is this girl, she's wrestling and she's different. Um, but I think after three or four years of in the same place like OCT, they've seen the jokes, they've seen the, they know the comedy, they know I have that charisma, they know I have the jokes and stuff like that. So I think it gets to a point where you just have to kind of prove because I train every week, I work hard, and then a lot of the time I don't get to show that in the ring. So I think it was my chance to show what I actually can do and just kind of test myself out there to show everyone that it's like, okay, yeah, I'm fun, I like to have a laugh, I drink, I, like, I'm a big character, but behind the character there's wrestling there too. And I felt like today with progress because it was such a full circle match with Ginny because uh, Ginny is just someone I've been feuding with for years and we never had an end to it and I never beat her, that it was time, like that's such a big event to put it to bed and show her that I wasn't a joke as well. So is it a case of um, the, the good wrestling comes first and put you try and get yourself over first and then show it? Or yeah, so it, the, or I want to, the character wants to be shown first because that's what makes me different because we have so many amazing female wrestlers, a lot of them which are a lot better than me and they're doing very well for their wrestling but I just want to show that I can hang with them and that if it's put to the match where I can to have a real like a wrestling match that these other fantastic females are putting on that yeah I can do that too but as well my main thing is my character I enjoy my character, I enjoy having fun with it but I do like to show that like at the end of the day, this is something I train very hard for and I want to show that. Yeah, and then, um, obviously, Ginny seemed to wave goodbye to the crowd at the end, so um, can you have a word for your opponent and what she's like to work with and what she's like as just um, a female wrestler in this country? Ginny is possibly the best female wrestler in this country, the biggest star that has come out of this country. For someone that's been wrestling such a short time, she's made more waves than nearly anybody. She just came on the scene and was one of the biggest stars instantly. She just has a presence, she's fantastic, and instantly from the first time I wrestled her, which was at OTT as well, we just knew we had, our characters were going to collide a lot over the years, because we are polar opposites. So I feel like me being her, her last match of progress was almost, you know, it's polar opposites coming together and her kind of passing on, passing on the torch almost, I guess, of her being the strongest female in progress especially, and now she's passing on to the people to come next. Uh, Henry on my daily star. I guess you mentioned it there about um, back how much your character connects with the crowd. Can you maybe talk us through the inception of that character? Where did you um, piece together this um, amazing persona which the crowd just, you know, as we saw tonight, just go wild for? I think where the whole idea of Martina is, the way I see her, is that when, when I was a kid watching wrestling and I saw these amazing, beautiful girls on TV and I always kind of would look at it and be like, I love them, but I'll never be that. Uh, so when I started wrestling, I kind of knew I was never going to be a diva, let's say, you know, I, I didn't have the looks for it, I didn't have this, but I was like, how about I make something that's the polar opposite of that, you know what I mean? It's like, I'm just going to be the girl, like I'm going to be every other girl, like the girls that do go out and drink and they look a mess and they're hungover and they just like to have fun and they don't care how they look anymore because they're too drunk to care, you know, they just flirt with everyone. It's The, the typical session model is just someone that doesn't care and they're, they're not like everyone else. They are everybody, they're everyone real. So it's just what real girls are these days, you know. This is what people that like to have fun look like. They're not out there, they don't look like divas, but they think they do and it's great. It's just, it's the whole idea of it is just almost to have a, it's just having a joke really. Like the whole idea is everything behind Martina is just about having fun and that's like not taking yourself too seriously, not like focusing on what you don't look like and just embracing what you do look like and having fun with it and thinking you're the best ever even if you're not you know so that's what I, that's what the character kind of came from and just the idea of like having fun and not 
just doing something different. You know, not every girl needs to be the badass. Not every girl needs to be the strong fighter. You know, not everyone needs to be the bitch. Stuff like that. You know, maybe there's just that girl that just wants to go out drinking and she wants to have fun. But oh yeah, she wants to wrestle too. You know. <laughs> and I guess I'm talking more generally. What is it that's fueling the explosion in women's wrestling across the UK and Europe and beyond? What is it? Is there one reason or? I think it's for years of when wrestling was so popular throughout the Attitude Era and stuff like that, and, and women weren't showcased in the right way at all. And I, I just think like, I think people, when girls, when they grew up watching wrestling, they loved wrestling. So then as they watched wrestling, they loved it and they wanted to do that wrestling too. So then as everyone got older and times moved on, it was like, okay, it's time to show that the girls can wrestle as good as the guys. And I think once the fans and everyone started to appreciate that women could wrestle, just as well, if not sometimes better, than the men. They started showing that, oh, we've been neglecting this for too long, and it's time to actually give them the right platform to showcase, which is great. And I think it's really getting into a time where we're seen as equal. I guess to try and neatly link those two questions together, then is the session of Garrett almost a reaction to what we saw you know, back in the day when you know? It is, yeah, it is. It's, a, it's almost a play on the Attitude Era, if you get me. It's like, I think I look like one of the girls from the Attitude Era, even though I don't. You know, so but it's like it's the same kind of flirty aspect to it, the but in an ironic way almost. You know, it's like because I I do wrestle at the same time as well. But it's like I think I look like that. I think I'm a supermodel. I think I'm Stacey Keebler. You know, <laughs> but like in my head I do, but I'm very aware on the outside I don't. And I think that's kind of the joke I try to I try to put out there. <laughs>